Matt, how long have we been here, mate? And when did you start? Uh, it was the 14th of December. 14th of December. I should know that, shouldn't I? Uh, 14th of December. It's the day you shake. It's the day you changed our lives, mate. You know, welcome. <laughs> How are you today, mate? You, you feeling well today, Matt? Uh, yeah, I'm been well. Been keeping busy today. Good stuff. Good stuff. Cool. Chris, you well? Yeah, all good. 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 Cool. Is uh, you kept busy by uh, lots of productive and uh, fun work on going home, Chris? Yeah, and then the odd <laughs> message from my boss, not knowing how to do stuff. So you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> We do like a dabble, don't we? We do like a dabble. <laughs> cool. So just over four weeks. Um, where, where were you before, uh, Matt? Where, where, where did you where, remind us? Where, where did you come from before? Where were you working before? Uh, it was uh, I was working in um, Excellence IT last summer. Yes. Uh, cool. IT technician, just going through sorting out the like, uh, uh, like the server addresses, putting it all into one file. And yeah. doing some stuff with flows, sorting out the like auditing system. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And so that was what was it like an intern type thing, was it, or just a temporary job over Christmas over summer? I did a uh, work experience there, and then they gave me a summer job. Ah, oh, cool. So you must have been good there. A work experience, a summer job. <laughs> I think whenever I had a work experience, they just when I was younger, I think they just couldn't get everything to get rid of me. I didn't get a job after. So, you know. <laughs> well, they did get paid once, but I was doing something totally different. Um, so, uh, yeah, Excellence IT, they're, um, they're uh, based in Caffili, aren't they? Are they in Caffili still? Yeah, uh, I think they're still in Caffili, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, okay, cool. And uh, you, where did you study? Where did you go, where did you go to university? Uh, Cardiff Met. Ah, oh, Cardiff Met, lovely, cool. Uh, so you were, did you do much hardware stuff in, 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 in Excellence IT? Was it just like configuration of, of like on, on site, on-prem services, is it? Or? Uh, I did a lot of like uh, building, uh, com well, sorting new computers coming in, like yeah. uh, making sure they had all the right software on them yeah. uh, before they were sent off to clients. Yeah, I'll tell you a funny story. I shouldn't. Find, I'll tell you a funny story, right? It's funny in my eyes, anyway. It's probably not funny to the people who run the business or the charity, I should say. So, um, I did work experience once um, with I think it was like computers in the community or something. It was a really cool charity in Cardiff that basically takes all computers, like wipes them, and then puts them back out to them to the community, basically. You know, and I think they sell them for nominal fees, like you know, just to cover their costs, basically. And so uh, little old me went down there. I think I must have been about 14 or 15. I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe a bit older. I don't know. <laughs> like, and I went there and I was playing with this. Um, remember like the Mac towers, like the, the Macintosh towers that had like the colors on the side of them. Um, and I, my, I was getting quite good at like wiping the, the operating system and reinstalling the operating system and just like basically like this human conveyor belt of, of, of um, you know, refreshing these machines so they could be resold to the market, you know? Um, and I always remember like, obviously it was a bit, Bit of a lunatic as a kid, um, didn't, yeah, and I just kind of bit, bit inquisitive, I guess. Um, and I always remember like uh, looking at the back of this machine, thinking, "What does that red button do? What does that red switch do?" Um, and I remember like this uh, massive unit, massive warehouse now with all these computers, all these racks of like equipment, all plugged in. And I remember just flicking the red switch, just that pure like wanting to find out what it did. And like th there was a massive bang, and the whole room just went. Zoom. Well, because obviously I switched it from like UK power or whatever to the DC power on the power pack, you know. And I was like, oh shit. The, 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 yeah, I'm not sure I caused any favors there, like, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, um, that was my work experience for you in, in IT. <laughs> so, um, work experience in IT. What's that? I never did any work experience in IT. Didn't it? Oh, we could tell. <laughs> First joke of the day. <laughs> I'll remember that when you ask me a question. <laughs> <laughs> when I ask, yeah, ask you a question. <laughs> I know I do know you and I ask questions when I answer them. But anyways, um, cool. So Matt, your your this is your first real job, is it? First full job. Yeah, basically. Well, except cool. for making kitchens in the summer. Making kitchens in the summer. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Putting yeah. them in, um, putting them in with my dad. Yeah, so your well, dad's a, a, a kitchen fitter, is he, by trade, or is he just the DIY stuff? No, he just, he's a builder, but he's had someone nagging him for a couple of years to do them a kitchen. So yeah. then he was like, oh, come on, you're in and work. You can yeah. get up here and help me with it. Yeah, that's nice, nice to, nice to be involved, uh, I guess. But uh, yeah, interesting, the dynamic skill set, being able to put kitchens in and then come in to build uh, power pack maps as well. Yeah, so how have you found... <laughs> pretty different. 
<laughs> how have you found it then, Matt? How was your your first few weeks at Ipotech? What have you What have you learned? How have you found the journey? Uh, yeah, like um, first couple of weeks was just sort of trying to get used to how to navigate the software and that. But mm. I feel like now I'm starting to get used to like how to if I don't know something, how to then find it or like use mm. what's been already done as mm. like a reference. Yeah. And how are you finding the, the kind of software, the Power Platform? Um, how do you find it as a solution? Uh, yeah, it's good. It's like really good when it wants to do one thing, but then customizing how it looks sometimes is just sort of like, uh, I'm trying to do this little change, but it's just like, nah. Yeah, yeah. I know that. Um, did you did you know about the Power Platform before you started Architect? Uh, no, I not about the Power Platform. I knew about Power Automation, but not uh, like the Power Apps, like Dynamic 365. Okay. And why do you think that is? Like, um, why? Because obviously you're a computer grad, right? So, like, why, why do you think they don't like cover that kind of stuff in in those um, in those courses? Uh, I think it's mostly because of um, where it's more of a niche where like when you're in um, computer science they're mm. teaching you a lot of the like, fundamentals uh, behind like logic and that mm. in place they don't mm. quite teach you in languages it's more mm. so like uh, where you uh, learn in Python just mm. so that we can execute the logic not so much we learn in Python so we know Python yeah and you know, um, obviously, it's always important. I think it's fair to be honest. But but do you, do you sit there now and think that your degree has helped you in the work, the short work you've done? I know you've been here four or five weeks, you know. So you know, but do you think it's it's that background has helped you in in what you're doing today? Uh, yes, definitely. I would uh, think so because because uh, I know the logic of how something works. Then it can be uh, pretty. Uh, much easier because I know how something should be done and mm. just figuring out how to do it on this piece of software. Mm. Okay. Chris, have you got a computer science degree? I don't. It's a pain egg. <laughs> what, what, what did I, when I went to, I, I only went to college, didn't go to university for my. Yeah. Oh, I didn't go. Yeah, I didn't I go to university. I practitioner or something. Oh, something. If I can remember it. <laughs> But isn't it interesting that, you know, uh, they don't necessarily speak, uh, teach the technology. It is the logic, as Matt said. Um, and, uh, do you, you know, I, I'm unsure of whether I, uh, the educational systems is are, are applicable to the to where the technology is going in the future. You know? I, I think when it, when it comes to like courses and universities and stuff like that, obviously, they're, they're, I think they'd be more inclined to teach languages and, and you know, expressional kind of writing. And uh, like I said, the logic based side rather than a particular type, a particular software basis. And because, like Matt uh, said, it, you know, dynamics can be a bit of a niche in terms of software development. So, obviously, a lot of them build from code from scratch. Uh, so I think that's why you know, the universities would be down more with the language side and the, and the problem solving and all that kind of stuff rather than teaching like dynamics and power apps and, and stuff. Yeah. And, and Matt, what, what do you think? Um has been your kind of biggest learning, I guess, over the last uh, six weeks? What have you, what, what's... Mostly about uh, figuring out the use of views, I would say, because mm. that was something that I'd never really dealt with, because yeah. I, I think it was only one piece of software, which was like a GUI, which with a graphical interface, most of the software was just text-based. So yeah. using views was quite interesting out uh and like the inherency that comes with views having it in another folder but then linking it to the form through mm. well inherency basically mm. and i think that is the difference when you're writing like when you're using python you know or javascript html5 whatever it is you know that it's a very code based like you know textual based uh, method of, of development isn't it whereas what we're doing is actually we're not doing that kind of back-end coding of, 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 the, of the language of the software. We're taking a software that's already been developed and we're taking its components and building usable interfaces with that, usable products and features, aren't we? Which is a distinct difference. And I think I think sometimes I struggle to articulate that to people, you know, that they, they you know, I say we run an IT company and they go, well, what software do you build? And I, 
you know, we don't really build the software, do we? We we build the solutions that go go on, on the outside of that. Yeah. So the uh, software that we built is using the current software that we yeah. have available to us to create a application more mm. specific for the user. Mm. Um, yeah. All all the software is already in place. Mm. It's just creating like the interface and how everything's going to interact with each other for the user. So it is much different type of software development because it's taking something that can be made from multiple different reasons and then making it narrowly to cover this exact situation the the mm. client wants. Mm. And you know, just a longer term strategy. The view for me is to is to is to, is to, to hire more more graduates, um, but even maybe go. Um, earlier on in people's career or education and go into like college and take them out of college and, and upskill them and you know we're touching base with some of the local colleges around around the around Taswell at the moment trying to you know work out how we can bring in some of those skills and uh, some of those you know that capability I guess and if it does make sense um, and, and from your perspective does it feel like would you say we should continue to do that would you say that it's, it's a good thing to do and or do you think a couple of years earlier you might have struggled a bit more or what, what do you think? Um, I'm not quite sure. I think that'd probably be a good idea because if you're doing a computer uh, course in college, like some of the logic that I already knew whilst I was in college because I'd already done work with like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Yeah. So some of the practices that I knew then, it might mm. have taken me a bit longer to get into this software and know how to work it. but. I'd definitely say it'd be it'd be a good idea and it good for someone because it saves yeah. them like the nine grand a year tuition fees and things. <laughs> yeah, especially if they're not a hundred percent as well, doesn't it? Again, it gives them the opportunity to start. And Chris, do you think that's uh, you know because the models work, work working well at the moment, isn't it? I know we're only six weeks into the journey, but you know doing a fantastic job, Matt. By the way, you know we're really happy with the stuff that you've done. Uh, you know, just just to let you know that obviously you know that already because we have told you that <laughs> in your one to one. <laughs> uh, but uh, but Chris, you know, as uh, as the leader of the team there, you know, it, do you think it is a model we can continue to to expand on? Uh, yeah, definitely think it'd be a model to expand on. Um, as I said earlier, you know, I didn't go to university. I don't know my 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 knowledge and my my capabilities came from college, so I started from that kind of aspect and then built up my knowledge through you know various jobs and stuff coming through. So I definitely think it'd be a way to go forward. Also, kind of gives a bit back then that you know you get to train people up and uh, yeah. guide them through a career path, kind of as it were. Yeah, yeah, which is really important, isn't it? Um, and I think I think you know it's, it's just that balance. It's that it's a good it's a good split um, to have you know really technical capabilities like Chris and and and, and me. <laughs> Lol, come on, where's the joke, Chris? <laughs> well, <look. laughs> my dabble and, and, and Bing, Microsoft Bing, are my friends. Chris, Chris, Matt, and Bing are my friends. Um, they help me get through the day making these technical changes. Uh, but no, I think um, having uh, a split capability between you know really senior experienced uh, capabilities like Chris and, and, and Matthew and Richards as well um, and then having yourself come on board Matt as well that hopefully it's a good dynamic and we can all learn from each other as well because I'm sure there's things that the senior guys can learn from you and the logic and the approaches uh, and vice versa of course there will be um, and I think it's really important to bring through that technical capability as well and I, I definitely give back it's one of our values isn't it that if I can kind of give back to the community which is really important um, so I guess uh, your onboarding then, if you go back to back to the start of the journey with Architect, how was your onboarding journey, Matt? Was it okay? You can you can answer it honestly as well. This is not, this is a an honest reflection of running a business uh, that's growing at you know at our rate. Not 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 we're not sugarcoating this one, mate. Uh, yeah, it was a uh, pretty good coming on board. It was quite funny watching you search around for a laptop for me on the first day. <laughs> and then straight away I knew like the type of office that it was going to be and you're just like where have I put that like go yeah. on Chloe uh, Tasha go out and get a laptop <laughs> yeah I know yeah oh, what happened I can't remember remind me I think it was must have been like a mental day I think we were I think yeah did, did I just misplace it or did we just genuinely forget to order you one uh, you <laughs> had one in place I think but you're not sure where you put it so then you got a new one <laughs> 
Actually, if I remember correctly, I think it was in the boot of your car. Ah, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I panicked and realised we hadn't bought you a laptop and then uh, had to go to like Curry's or PC World or something and go and get it, I think. Um, but yeah, but, but actually, um, our onboarding process for you was um, was actually well planned out. Uh, you know, it was, it was, Tasha did a good job of putting all the tasks in a list because uh, other onboarding processes have been far more horrific than yours, uh, trust me. So you, you, had a, you had a good ride. Um, yeah. Well, Chris, yours, yours was good, was it, mate? No, it might have been a bit rocky at the start, but other than that, it was alright. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I think uh, just Office 365 helps us a little bit, doesn't it, in terms of just coming in, just signing in, no kind of security rule, like no processes, it's all set up for you, isn't it, in the background? And I hope that as soon as you got the laptop, it was pretty straightforward then, wasn't it, man? Uh, yeah, I just had to get the email off of Tasha with the password. Then once yeah. I had that, I already had access to most uh, all the software. Then it was yeah. just getting permissions for some things on like SharePoint and Dynamics. Yeah, yeah. And we're, you know, we're looking forward to kind of getting that really kind of uh, efficient, you know. I think the great thing as well is that, was it with yourself, Chris? Did we give you access to 365 before you got a device? Or was it Matt? I can't remember. Um, I, no, I think it was me, but I couldn't access it because I think you spelled my name wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three get access. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> well, that just, it just proves, doesn't it? If you put it down to one person who makes a mistake a lot, uh, then uh, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, yeah, it's going to be, yeah. So, but the good thing about Office 365 is we can give access before giving a device, which I think is good, especially for onboarding if you want to dabble in the evenings and just. Have a play around and, and look around the content that we've got online and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but yeah, get 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 the guy's name right, Joel. God, <laughs> I did get it. Before, I did get it before I joined because I think I emailed you like a week before I started and said, "Oh, it's incorrect." But then you give me a brand new one, and so yeah. I was able to access it before I started. Yeah, well, that's why Tash is here. Tash is here, changed our world, so made our made the operations of Vipertech a thousand times better than than I could do. Um, especially with this picture that we're painting at the moment of you getting names wrong and putting laptops in the boot. Um, yeah, it's a nightmare. Uh, but all fun and games. But I guess, um, what, what, what are you finding enjoyable about the role so far then, Matt? What, what's the most enjoyable part of the, of the, of the role? Uh, it's, been inter it's been fun to get back in the mindset that I was in uni where is it how to figure out problems when you come along to them. Because mm -hmm. we not, not, I haven't... Not but you know mm -hmm. <laughs> when you come along to the problems right <laughs> yeah when i come along to... <laughs> here he comes joel's coming again the problem <laughs> <will> come. <laughs> but are you enjoying that challenge uh yeah it was something i enjoyed in uni because mm. uh, it was uh the practical side in uni was always the fun part and uh, now i'm just mm. doing that on a daily basis which is yeah. much better and i stay in that mindset because i'm doing it on the daily basis yeah, of course. I, I, I love the technical element. I, even today, just, you know, on Excel, building some, you know, kind of uh, tables and stuff, just analyzing some data, connecting to dynamics and project online and, you know, building those reports. You know, I, I love that kind of technical stuff. It's just, you can't help it. I don't know. It's just, this is part of you, really, isn't it, when you're a tech guy? Um, but, uh, yeah, and, and I, love, uh, I love the whiteboard moments that Chris has from time to time. Uh, when we were back in the office, I just see him scoot along the floor and just start whiteboarding stuff out, and I could see his brain thinking, you know. Um, it's visualization. If you write it down, I can visualize what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I'm exactly the same. Yeah, I do it on my on my notebook. I just write, scratch it out. How does that talk to that? How does that talk to that? And it's a, it's a, a, a quite simple, really, isn't it? System development when it comes when it comes when you peel it back to the basics. I mean, it it is complicated. It has a com complicated element, but if you bring it back to basics of tables and relationships and fields, I mean you know and, and maybe some uh, some logic in there as well um it's i, I find it quite therapeutic really, at times i don't like that you class it as simple <laughs> <laughs> but in its component parts it is simple isn't it yeah, it's, it's when and i think it's like a human a human nature to if you don't understand it you think it's complicated yeah you know if if, if and i'm the, i'm the same I, I i didn't understand like a model driven app you know two years ago i just didn't get it um, I, didn't, I didn't really understand, you know, if I'm honest, I thought probably the Dynamics 365 was, 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 was configured and built using, you know, the kind of the code, you know, somebody sitting there coding, you know, to change things. But it's not. It's not. It's just, 
Of course, you should yeah. be. I think when, uh, if I remember correctly from our interview, when we were discussing, I think like we were on two pages at once because I was obviously I was used to using Dynamics from 2013 onwards, where yeah. it was all JavaScript based, you know, plugins uh, yeah. and other stuff internally uh, compared to like how it work, operates now. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so it, it used to be quite like that, quite heavy on that side. Yeah, and I think that's where Microsoft and the industry are going. It's this low code, no code approach, right? It's it's. And I think they're, they're, they're catering for um, generations to come through that are technology enabled and technology uh, proficient. So, you know, they're, the special terms, of them, I can't remember them, but, you know, there's a, a generation that comes through that will be the first, organiz- uh, the first generation of workers that will be able to build systems. You know, so, so interestingly, think about our role in 20, 20 years' time will be obsolete. It will be. Uh, yeah, because because uh, I, I, think, I think with the... With the low code, no code kind of approach. Yeah. What what we do, we facilitate the, the the creation of software for a client. Yeah. Um but then the way that it's built gives them the access that in a year's time if they want to make changes, they can do that internally then so they don't have to do the bulk of the work. They just do the small changes that they want to make because it's yeah created in an easy format. Yeah. It uh, it saves them money in the long term. Yeah, exactly. But in twenty years time when the, if the technology continues to change at this rate you know, you know the capability will be in the industry that they'll be able to do systems. You know, you know, and, and, and you know, and the college is sort of caught up, and you know, and then we'll be onto different technology. We won't be, we'll be doing nothing. We'll be onto something more AI and predictive analytics, right? Um, virtual reality. It's like um, you got these sites on the internet about uh, like making websites, and mm. they make it really easy to make websites, but then you still got people who are web designers. Yeah, exactly. You're right. Yeah, you're right. So talking about the future then, Matt, where do you think you're, where, where, where do you want to be in, in three to five years time? What do you want to be doing? And you don't have to say work for Tech, by the way. <laughs> uh, no, I think I'd be looking at um, trying to get into like a senior role on yeah. uh, Dynamics, like wherever that is. Great, great, good stuff. And that, that, you know, so that's something that is, is hopefully because you you said you didn't really know it before, and you've come in in six weeks now. You've you've seen a, 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 the fringes of it and, and done some things with views and fields and you know our little holiday app as well. So it's excited you that much. You think actually I, I could go on and be a senior developer in this technology? Uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a software that I've actually enjoyed, and as I've learned to use it uh, more proficiently. Uh, yeah. I've enjoyed it and seen the capability of MO. Yeah, great. And I think I'm the, I'm the same, to be honest with you. As I said, like two years ago, you know, I was very much SharePoint, and, you know, we were Share, SharePoint um, architects, basically, of SharePoint solutions and, the, and a little bit of Power, power Automate, or, or Flow, as it used to be called. Um, you know, uh, and now I've seen that the, the power of the Dynamics platform and uh, and the data serve, God, I've got to get that right now, is it, what's it called? Dataverse, dataverse, isn't it? It's not the CDS anymore. Um, you know, and I think that that is really gonna enable us to do some great things. And, and with our customers that are using that technology, um, I'm excited also about what the future, what we could do in the future in terms of the solutions we could build for our customers and the problems we could solve. You know, I think it is a great platform to be, to be involved with. So I'm glad you share that, Matt, and I'm excited by it. But um, Cool. Um, any other points you'd like to, to add, Matt? And at the end of the at the end of the conversation, any any, any thoughts that come to mind? Um, no, not particularly. Okay, mate. Cool, Chris. Um, any thoughts? Any any part? Any parting thoughts? Um, other than beer, other than beer tonight. <laughs> I had a few yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the only one that came to my mind is obviously I know we've discussed this quite pre- uh, quite a few times in the past is um, obviously we look into these Microsoft kind of technologies and um, you know it'd be interesting if we can find a uh, practical use to start building on that those hollow lenses for the mm-hmm. augmented reality I think that would be a, you know I think that might be a, as well as AI building that would be a you know potential opening doors for the future. Oh yeah, mixed reality, you know, uh, augmented reality, you know that that is that is brilliant, you know. Um, I do think there's a um, there's a step change, and I think at the moment, um, but at the moment, the I don't think the industry capability, it, it, particularly in public sector, not yet, you know. I think we we got to get into the cloud first in, in many in many of our customers and get them utilizing three six five and 
get them to use our, utilizing the power platform. And then, you know, in 12 months time, 18 months time, I, I really think that there'll be a, a, a really big market for that type of technology. And, you know, to, to articulate what, um, you know, HoloLens can do is, is very difficult. You know, we, we find it difficult to articulate what Project Online could do, a Project for the Web could do, or Power BI could do. So imagine trying to articulate what HoloLens can do. Uh, but I absolutely fully agree. I'm very excited by that. But I think the dynamics capability we're building at the moment in the Power Platform and, and those technologies, that we're, the capability we're building out of tech is going to put us in the right place to deliver the foundation for those type of technologies in, in a year or two's time. So, yeah, um, we just need to bite the bullet and go and uh, buy a few more of those HoloLens uh, glasses and start walking around and seeing cables on the wall and stuff like that. I'd love, to, that'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? But there's a really good point because, you know, if you, if you, if you, you know, where my, my mind was going is that, uh, you know, at the moment we're very much cable centric and, and, and comms cabinet centric, right? Imagine being able to walk into a server room in a building with a HoloLens on and scan the server and see all the codes, all the serial numbers of the codes, see a cable going into a port number and know which desk it's, it's facilitating. You know, imagine that. Technology. Imagine being able to go and see the power line within the wall that goes up to the ceiling, over to the to the distribution center in the building, and down. You know, just uh, uh, therefore not drilling through the power wall when you put something. You know, when you put something on the wall in the comms room, which inevitably turns off the whole building, which has happened before in my in my experience. And uh, and it happened at like one o'clock in the morning, and everybody was like, "Yeah, it's fine. Nothing, nothing's gone wrong. It's all great." Because nobody was actually using any of the office equipment. You know, until nine o'clock in the morning. So uh, nine o'clock in the morning, everybody flooded the building back in the old days, and nobody got onto the network, and just because somebody drilled through the pipe. Um, you know, in the comms room at two o'clock in the morning. You know? So so that kind of technology will will facilitate and enable uh, growth. Um, you know, and you know, for, for us, you know, stretch our capabilities even further, uh, which would be absolutely fantastic. So, Matt, thank you for joining it for for, for joining Icotech, <laughs> and uh, uh, thank you for doing this as well. Um, but yeah, I just want to reiterate our our our, our kind of uh, positivity around the work that you're doing. Uh, thank you very much for for stepping up and and helping us because you've really 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 helped us. And, and every bit of work you're doing at the moment is brilliant and fantastic. And I, I we I Chris Mark Matt we all love the. Um, intuition the drive the determination to learn and grow and, and that's part of our our culture here at architect as you know so um thank you very much um welcome and uh hopefully we'll do these in a year one in a year's time and do your first year at architect and see if we can uh, lean some from your learnings in, in a bit more detail yeah yeah thank you i'm um, glad to be here good man, hopefully good man. i'm still here in a year's time I'm sure you will be, mate. I'm sure you will be. I might not be, but you, you will be. <laughs> Chris will already kill me by then. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Have a good evening. Turn up. Bye-bye.